if you want to let us know what you teach, where you're from, that'd be great. We'll get started. Actually, I think we'll get started now. Three o'clock my time, four o'clock your time, John. Not sure where it is for everyone else, but um, anyways. Go. Um, huh? I said, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> um, welcome to Using Book Creator with Writing Workshop. Um, my name is Catherine Cappiello, and I am one of the teacher success managers here at Book Creator. I am Book Creator Cat on Twitter, so if you are on Twitter, feel free to give me a follow. I always send out different resources, different updates, and so forth, so you can always be in the know of what is up to date with Book Creator. I am located out in Chicago. Um, prior to um, Book Book Creator. I've been with Book Creator now for over three years, but prior to Book Creator, I was a classroom teacher and I taught for about over nine years. Um, and during those nine years, I taught kindergarten, third grade, fourth grade, ninth grade, and 10th grade. Um, and I actually used Book Creator in my third grade classroom and um, for during my writer's workshop. So um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to use Book Creator in writer's workshop. I specifically used it for the publishing piece, but I'm going to show you today how you can use it for all of the stages of writer's workshop today. So some exciting stuff. I also have my colleague, John, on here, so he's going to introduce himself as well. All right. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, my name is John Smith. Uh, I am the iPod teacher. Oops, we need to fix that, Catherine. Sorry, it says uh, when you put the iPod teacher in there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's right. iPod teacher is somebody else. You don't want to follow that person. I don't know there who that is. There we go. There's my, I, I didn't catch that earlier. I don't know what my brain isn't working, but anyway. My brain's I, not working either today. I have a little I bit am, of a cold, so sorry. You know, I am the iPod teacher on Twitter. So uh, yeah, if you want to follow me, great. Sorry, my dog is going off here. Um, but uh, I am another teacher success manager here at Book Creator. Uh, so uh, excited to be here for this webinar. Uh, Toss much led for 12 years, tech integration for seven. And I've been at Book Creator for five years full time now. Uh, about a year and a half part-time before that. So uh, yeah, anyway, that's a little bit about me. So I'm excited to see Writer's Workshop in Book Creator today. Awesome. Thanks, John, for being here. So first off, um, our agenda, we're going to talk about kind of the why first, um, why, use, why use Writer's Workshop in the classroom, um, and then also why use Book Creator for it. We're going to talk about just kind of um, focusing on that why. Um, then we're going to look at digitizing with Book Creator, how to digitize Writer's Workshop specifically, or just digitize Writer's Workshop altogether and putting that into Book Creator. We're going to talk about how do you begin because it's going to look at some of the examples I might show you. You might be a little overwhelmed by them. So we're going to talk about how do you specifically begin. Um, we'll look at through those examples. And then at the end, we're going to give you some resources um, for us, a little exciting things that are going on this month. And then we'll have some time for some Q&A. But if you do have any questions, um, just as John said in the chat, um, throw those in the chat. He can pause me along the way. Um, and also he can answer them in the chat too. If you have any aha moments throughout this time too, you stick those in the chat too. We love to hear them along the way. Um, anything that excites you, stick that in the chat as well. So focusing on the why, um, why do we use Writer's Workshop? The first thing, the reason why we use Writer's Workshop, we wanna provide students with opportunities for them all to be writing wherever they are at now. So writing at their specific writing levels. Um, we want to also have a place where we can confer with students so we can teach them specific writing strategies that we are learning in the classroom. We want to um, create a space that we can um, for students to collaborate with one another and learn from each other on specific writing strategies that we are learning in the classroom. Um, we we want to create a space that we can actually explicitly teach specific writing standard um, writing strategies in the classroom for those students by studying specific authors and then um, practicing those writing strategies in the classroom. We also want to create a, a space that we can celebrate our successes as writers in the classroom. Um, we want to create a space where students can learn how writing can be used for different means of expression in the classroom. 
um, and just overall teach our basic writing skills for them um, to use in um, th throughout the grades to come and then even beyond when they are finished um, in 12th grade for whatever they do um, when they're done with um, after their seniors. And the why for Book Creator, why we suggest that you use Book Creator. Um, the first thing is the simplicity with Book Creator. It is so simple to use Book Creator and everything is going to be in one place. So we always say one app. We're using the web-based version today, but everything is there that you're going to need. It is so fun for students. Students are going to be engaged and everything is there that you're going to need um, for them to really take off and you're bringing creativity Activity into your writer's workshop as well. You can record any mini lessons that you would that you need that you can embed right into Book Creator, um, which you'll see in some examples that today I share with you. Um, and you can save those for later use if you want to. Um, we have built-in templates that you can already just kind of take off and run with. So you don't have to recreate the wheel, which you're, you're going to see today. One key thing that I really struggled with during Writer's Workshop was um, meeting the needs of all my learners. And what I love about Book Creator is the built-in accessibility. It's really going to help you meet the needs of all your learners by giving them different ways that they can actually, during their um, independent work time, there's different options of ways that they can um, write. Um, we have different features that you're going to see today for them to respond um, and um, they can respond in using those different options, which are going to give them those different accessibility features. So that's one thing I really struggled with was meeting the needs when I was conferring and the students were um, independently working. I had some students that would just kind of sit there um, and they would struggle. And so it was just making sure that everyone was working at all times. Um, Book Creator is perfect for that. Another thing is your students become real published authors. That's why I used it. During the publishing piece, um, the, the students actually get to publish. So I used it always as the final draft at, at the end of each unit. They get to um, publish their pieces, and then they become a real published author. So we're going to talk about publishing towards the end today, and you're going to see how you can publish books, um, and then they get to be published authors. So that opportunity really gets them engaged, and they see how that they can become a real published author. When you publish, you get a private link. That private link you can easily share with families. One thing I loved was with one of our features, the students get to record their voice. And one thing some of my students did was they recorded their voice in their native language. So not only could we share with families with that private link, but then they also could record their story in their native language. So this, the parents could hear the story in their specific language as well. So I thought that was really powerful. Um, students and teachers can collaborate. There's a co-teacher feature. So you can um, add a co-teacher if you have someone, a specialist that needs to add um, accessibility to the books, um, or if you have maybe a tech coach that wants to come in and see what you're doing, you can add that co-teacher or just someone from your grade level team that you wanna pair up with, you can add a co-teacher or a librarian or someone like that. You can add them right into your library to work together. Um, students can collaborate as well through our collaboration feature you're going to see today. You can turn on collaboration and students can work together um, and then they can leave feedback. Um, providing feedback, to me, that was a struggle. Um, taking all of their writer's notebooks home sometimes, I was lugging them around everywhere. I would lose stuff. It was all over my classroom. This way, everything's digital and I could leave feedback in a very quick way. Um, there's multiple ways to leave feedback as well, not only through text, which you'll see today. So being able to leave quick, meaningful feedback for my students um, in the ways that, that are going to be accessible to them is really helpful with Book Creator. Um, 
Also, students can add multimedia to their writing. Um, this is going to be so engaging for them and really takes it up to a whole nother level. They can add videos, they can add audio, um, and um, they can add images. So it's really going to take it up to a whole nother no notch. And I just said before, you can add a co-teacher. So those are just uh, some reasons why Book Creator. I'm going to show you all this in just a second, too. So let's look at some of these examples. Um, how does this look like? What does this look like for a writer's workshop? Um, one example first would be during that pre-writing phase. So, uh oh, I have it in my library. Don't worry, that didn't that won't work. Let's go out of the library. That pre-writing phase right here. <laughs> Excuse my cough. I have a little bit of a cold right now. Um, the pre-writing phase. During that um, pre-writing phase, when the students, um, we've just studied their, um, like a specific author, we are looking at their writing styles, and then they are doing their pre-writes, um, you can put them into Book Creator. This is, um, I'm sure you might have heard of like the small moments. This would be a lower grade example, but um, they're picking their small moment. They're talking about that. They're, it's from the watermelon and they're picking their specific small moments from their seeds. Um, and they're looking at which small moment did you select. Which I, what I want you to focus on here is I wanna focus on the organization. So think of this as like a graphic organizer for the students to fill out as a pre-write before they're writing. What you can see here on the pre-write is as a teacher, I can add accessibility by adding in these record buttons for directions for my students. So as I'm conferring and the students go back during independent time, they do not need me. They can see which small moment do you, did I select or did you select? They can press this record button and it's they're being told again what they need to do. And this is perfect for all students. Then they can write or type or however they want to um, they could record their voice, they could do, they could draw a picture, they could do whatever they want to respond to what small moment did you select. What happened first, what happened then, and what happened last? If they forget what these things are, like I said before, you can just click on the record button, or they even have a transcript during the small moment, what specifically happened first? Where were you? What were you doing? What was the first movement, first word, describe what happened first? So forth. You can also edit those if you need to. But we have transcripts, we have record buttons and so forth, which we're gonna talk about in just a little bit. But there is your pre-write. So you have your accessibility. Um, the graphic organizer is perfect. They can do this on their own while you're conferring. Like I said, you have different options of ways they can respond. It doesn't have to be just through writing. They can use images. So they could go here. They could use the image search. They could take a picture. They could use the pen tool. They can use text. They could record. They can respond in different ways. They have options and it's um, providing them access to actually um, respond to this. So that's one example. Catherine, I have to say, I love I love this example. And what I love most about it is the audio uh, record button for the teacher giving instructions. Uh, so I used to do that in my class. And it was funny because before Book Creator, my kids, they would ask me questions and I'd have to repeat the same answers over and over and over and over again. Right. And I think in I think like inside, I think the kids were like they didn't want to do it because they felt embarrassed that they had to ask again and again and again the same question right over and over again. So I think this is really awesome because now those kids, uh, when I did start using this, they would say, don't ask Mr. Smith, ask fake Mr. Smith, even though like the record button was still me. Like they were like, let's just ask the record button. That way we don't have to ask him over and over again, the same question. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I like that example. I love that fake Mr. Smith. That's perfect. This is another example of a template. So we just saw a teacher template. This is another template. This is um, going to be, a, I believe this is second grade and they made a whole template. This is moving through the writer's process um, through writer, writer's workshops. This is more towards the ending stages. Um, and this is when they're going to be writing their final drafts. 
Um, you're going to notice that they have a book here for their nonfiction final draft. It has their steps to the good writing, so it has their anchor chart. The teacher here created a video of walking them through that anchor chart again. What are steps to good writing? So it walks them through that, and they embedded that video right there. And then it goes through the, another, the, um, the goals to the writing, remember what good writers do. So students have these anchors inside their book that they can go back to during this writing. And now they have their final draft. So this would be during the final stages. Um, the students write their text here, and then they have the beginning picture. So this is beginning, middle, end. That's how their district was following it in second grade. And they would draw their picture here. The middle writes their text middle here, draw the picture and end. What I love about this book is they included another piece. We're gonna talk about celebrating and reflection later with being a piece of writer's workshop. What I love about it is they included that self-reflection piece here in their book. So after they're done with their final draft, after a few days of working on their final drafts, then the next day at the end when they're celebrating, they're going to self-reflect on their writing. So they included the self-reflection that's very interactive. They drag and drop stars to respond to their reflections. So it's a great way to show you how you can do that final draft piece to publish right within Book Creator. Um, and then they also um, use the record button here. It says record yourself explaining what you liked best about your story and if there's anything you would change. What's great about this is their whole grade level team used this. So as a teacher, you create one template, your whole grade level team can use it as an assessment piece at the end of a unit. And then um, your students can publish that as their final drafts and then you all can use those. Anything you wanna to add to that, John? Sorry, I couldn't find my uh, mute button. No I, no, I think this is fantastic. I absolutely love this example. And I think just in general, I think one of the things that, um, you know, for Book Creator, I think a lot of times people think of Book Creator as like a, as a, as a finished product, right? Like, it's like, oh, we're, we're done with all this stuff. Let's make something at the end to show our learning. And what I love about this is it, it it's not always like that, right? You can use it for every step. Uh, of the process and 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 it helps your students kind of visualize everything and get everything planned and ready and then it 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 just brings more cohesion i suppose to the process right of going from you know brainstorming and rough drafting to a, like a final product so i love i love how it all kind of just works together and then i'll show you some final products and what i love about this is you can actually publish an entire library of books so that can really, this is through that celebration part. So after you have finished that unit, you can celebrate your classroom and celebrate the successes of their writing by publishing an entire library of books. And now the students can go through and celebrate each other. So they can read each other's books. They can celebrate being authors um, and they can read each other. They can go into books if they, if you have collaboration on and leave feedback, leave comments if they want to, to really um, just get excited about each other. Um, I'll just click on one of the, one of these books, but these are final drafts right here. Um, and then um, in here, you'll notice that these, these books, they um, recorded their voice reading them, which I loved. Um, and the students drew their own pictures in here. So these are just final drafts of their published work as well. So I love how you can record your voice, reading the text, practicing fluency, and then also you can draw your own pictures and get to be really, really creative. So I love that. And then I have one other one. Um, I am gonna share this book at the end. So you're gonna have all these resources that you can take a look at as well. And then this one's um, just nonfiction. So that was a fictional library. This is a nonfictional library. Um, and then it has all these nonfiction books. And you can see all these students study different topics. We have um, states of mind, um, journey inside your mind with depression, anxiety, ocean pollution, um, risen, what are dreams, so forth. There's so many different topics. Um, and they have their nonfiction pieces as well. So it's a great way just to celebrate writing, which I love after being able to publish. Um, and then this example right here is a great example for just getting students to write. So we have here a writing journal um, and it just has different writing prompts in it. 
So each day here, you're having students just write about a specific topic. So this, this day, she's writing about the field trip. The next day, she's writing about summer camp, a class pet, um, why they should get a class pet. Another way it day is, oh, um, who's your best friend? Um, the first day of school, and they're just responding to different prompts. What a great way just to keep their writing journal and getting them to write, write within Book Creator. And like I said before, you could do options. Students can write, they could record their voice if they needed to, um, record your voice and first and then write and respond. Um, include images, do different things to uh, maybe record a video first and then respond to your writing to help you with different things. So you could have different options, but you can see here she included images with her writing. So they get to be really creative. Catherine, I think that's a, I think that's a really important point that you bring up there because I think sometimes as teachers, you know, when we think about the writing process, right? Like it's all just, it's like writing, right? And then we, we add the other stuff kind of later. But I remember in the classroom, my, my students could sit there, like if I asked them to tell me about their weekend, right? Or going to the dentist, my kids could sit there and tell me all day long, right? They could just sit there and yak, yak, yak until my ears fell off. But then when I asked them to put something down on paper, like there was like this paralysis, right? Between what happens in their brain and how they get it onto the pen. And so I think you're right. If you can take audio and just spew out all of your stuff into an audio button or onto a video, then once you've got it all there, you can pause it, you can stop, you can listen, you can play, you can go back and forth until, and then get all your thoughts in order and bring it back into the actual writing. So I think that's a very important point that you make there. Absolutely. That's another example. Um, last one before we move on, I have this, um, this one's really neat. So this is, um, it's called The Glowing Book. Um, I love this one. It's um, showing, it's a whole book of uh, their entire class did a creative writing um, example of, and they, it's everything that they've done through Writer's Workshop. Um, and it, it goes, you can, um, it goes through the books that they actually analyzed first. So the authors that they studied, um, and they, and then they studied a plot diagram, the different parts of it. And then they went into um, their project. You see, they were studying here. There's their students. Um, they were studying their favorite author and their favorite illustrator. Um, and then it goes into their action photos using Book Creator. So seeing they're here, they're adding their speech bubbles, they're adding clip art, they're using the Read to Me feature, adding sound effects, recording their voice. They're drawing, they're adding drawings even to their own stories. Um, it just shows how they're using Book Creator. And then um, it has some quotes from the students of why that they really love using Book Creator. And then um, what I love about it is the table of contents. So here are all the stories that you can actually just press on and it takes that them to that specific section in the book. Um, or you can just click through the whole book and read it one by one if you wanted to. But let's say I wanted to read Jonathan and the magic book. I can just click on that one and it will take me to Jonathan, the magic book right here. And then I can read that story and so forth. So, and then they recorded all of their voices and stuff like that too. But it's a really creative way of showing what they, they also studied the authors, they studied illustrators. And then um, through Writer's Workshop, they published their final draft pieces. So highly recommend checking that out. All right, let's go in to look at how do you begin doing this? Um, we always highlight start small. What I did when I started doing this, like I said, I just started with final drafts. I had their final drafts. I'm going to have them put them into Book Creator. Start simple and small. Are you going to tomorrow put everything into Book Creator? You are awesome if you can do that, but don't overwhelm, your, overwhelm yourself. Start small. Just do the final draft. Put it in. They're going to use that for Book Creator. Um, do even just the pre-write in Book Creator. Do something small, simple. Just do an About Me book in Book Creator. Start small. 
Second thing, have fun and let your students have fun. The first day you present Book Creator with them, if this is your first time ever using it, let them play. Don't do a, like an assignment the first time. Let them play, let them learn the features, just have fun with it. Even when you start playing around with it, have fun. Um, explore, explore even when you, I give you this book at the end, explore through those example books I, I posted, um, explore through all of the books that we have available to you. And number four, ask questions, ask John and I, ask questions on Twitter, um, ask questions, um, even look through our learn section within Book Creator. Um, we're here for you. So if you have questions on anything, how you should embed Book Creator, we're here to help. Okay, so what does this look like? Um, first, the pre-lesson. So pre-lesson, if you are looking for graphic organizers, the first thing that you can do is we have organizers for you ready to go. The first thing that you can do, if you are in a comic book, you can click on the plus sign and we have um, comic panels ready for you to go. That's the easiest way. That's how I created my pre-lesson that I shared with you. Click on those panels and we have all these panels that are ready to go that are great for graphic organizers. That's one way. A second way that I recommend is using our Canva integration. There's a ton of graphic organizers right within Canva. The second way, if I was to go to more and click on Canva, and you have to activate Canva in our app store, but once you've activated it and you have the Canva, the free teacher account, which you have to verify, um, and John just stuck a support article in there about Canva. What I can do is in the search tab, I can search for graphic organizers, okay? I have a ton of different graphic organizers and there's like a there's a bunch of them that I can pick from um, and I can just look through here. Maybe I'll put um, maybe plot. Graphic organizer. OK. Here's a plot um, graphic organizer. Plot mountain. Let's do this one. OK, here's my plot mountain. And let's say today we are focusing on um, the beginning, the opening. That's all I want my students to focus on is the opening, okay? So I'm gonna actually remove, or actually we'll put this all in the book because we're eventually going to, we're gonna focus on the other ones too, but let's, let's do this. I'm gonna remove title and author. I don't, I don't want that there. I'm just gonna remove that. There we go, okay? I'm going to go to elements and I'm going to spice this up a little bit. See, there's like photos. I can go to the photos down here. There's like some cool things I can add. Let's go to, I'm going to add a hiker. Let's add some hikers in here. Um, this one. Just for some things. There we go. Plot Mountain. Okay. So let's add that in there. Here's my graphic organizer. We're going to focus on opening today. Okay. All I need to do is click add to book. Click add to book. Bam. There's my graphic organizer. Okay. Today, we're only going to focus on opening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click record, start recording. Like we did in our mini lesson today, you are going to be focusing on the opening of your store of your story, like we saw in A, B, and C's book, blah, 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 blah. So they're going to look at the author and we're going to do that as well. There's my audio button. Put that up there. And they're going to focus on their opening. They can add text on top of that. They can add an image. They can add a record button, however they want to respond. They're focusing on what that opening is going to look like. I could have also, for the plot mountain, made the opening a lot bigger and just deleted those and just focused on what is the opening of today and so forth and kind of like made an arrow and made the opening much larger. And we could have like gone through the pages of like where, where we were on the mountain or something like that 
and just drawn an arrow to it. I might have done that just to make the students have more space. But there's so many graphic organizers that you can play around with that are ready for you to go. John, do you have anything to add about that? No, I just, again, I, I absolutely love uh, our Canva integration. There's so many really cool graphic organizers and things in there. Um, but for me, the real power is not even just in that graphic organizer, but like you said, being able to take all of the book creator goodies yeah. and drop them right on top of that, right? So we can have those audio buttons or put a video in there instead in the opening, right? Whatever. This is, I, I love it. I think it's great. And I love how you can customize it and spice things up, like you said, a little bit, right? Because we, we, you know, we, we got to get our kids engaged and excited about this and um, this is definitely a good way to do that yeah let's add a video um embed a video about plot embed a video about plot right about plot or the opening or something like that and focus on the opening portion of it and then have them do that and focus on that so so many things you can do the other thing I was just, I was totally just thinking uh, um, when you said embed the video. So if we had a story right that we had read, even going to YouTube and finding a, a clip of something that isn't from the actual story, but is similar right to the opening. So if there's uh, the story where they open up on a snowy mountain scene, right, having them find a YouTube clip of a snowy mountain scene could help trigger some stuff in their brains about what actually did happen in the real story that they read. So just any way that we can, you know, grab the kids' attention, uh, engage them in the process and really get them thinking deep about their writing and about the the plots and different things that they're reading and doing in class is, is going to be gold. So I love this. Absolutely. All right. So checking progress. The best thing about Book Creator is when your students are working, you're going to, in the library, if you don't know this already, you're going to be able to check their progress in the library and go into their books. And as simple as that, you're going to be able to look at what they're doing and checking their progress all on your one screen. Instead of having to open up all their journals, walk around the room, look at everything, you can be even conferring with students and looking at what they're doing at the exact same time. So that's checking progress. Um, accessibility, you already have seen the accessibility features we have. So we've kind of gone over that already, um, but you can record with the recording on one of those. You saw those transcripts. So you can add the transcripts um, with the camera. When you record video, you can also add captions. So add captions for students. Um, when you add text, you can also add text. When you're adding text right here, I can um, do speech to text. So if the students, if I um, did this, I was going to say, my book is going to be about dogs. I also can change the speech to text in over 120 different languages. So a lot of different accessibility features for my students when they are writing in during writer's workshop. So the speech to text is a huge, huge tool, uh, tool that I wished I had um, during when I was doing that, because that would have been that would have just opened so many doors for my students if they had that speech to text option, even just for spelling. If they didn't know how to spell something, they would just stop. Imagine getting to speech to text and being able to spell a word real quick um, and just opens those doors for those students. Anything you want to add to that, John? Yeah, absolutely. I love this. And my kids, they always teased, um, you know, like they would say things like, well, we don't want to write. And if we finally did get them to write because of Book Creator, they were so excited about it. They would say to me, like, I still can't spell. I still can't type. I still don't know where the keys are. Like, what am I supposed to do? And that button right there alone made everything change for them because they could write with their face. That was their whole expression, right? It was this idea of writing with their face. And it does. It just opens up a whole new world to students. Um, and I loved how you said, you know, they can write and stop and then use the speech to text to get a word that they may not know how to spell. Um, my own children do that. And I think that what I love about Book Creator and accessibility is that the tool itself is almost self-differentiating, right? Because the kids will go in there and they will find things that they're good at using and they'll use those tools. And if they can't do something um, like spell a word or write a paragraph or something, then they'll, they'll, they'll know there's tools there that they can use to help them. So I think this is very powerful. Absolutely. Okay, providing feedback. It's my favorites. I talked about feedback earlier. 
So you're able to see what all the students are doing. You also can provide feedback. So down here, there's a little plus button with a little comment, bu comment bubble. Click on this. I'm going to go through this quickly just because matter of time. You can add text feedback. So I can say, great work on your page. Obviously, I give them better feedback, but post. I also can use a video. I can leave them a video. You can see John even checked that off. So you can see John Smith left a little check mark. I can leave an audio clip. I can leave an emoji. I can leave a GIF. I can leave an animated emoji. I can leave a little feedback sticker. Look at all these engaging ways that I can leave feedback. And look at John. He responded, maybe this is John's page. And he said, thanks, Ms. Capiello. I worked hard on this page. He can respond back if commenting has been turned on. You also can turn this off for students so they can only read it. But if it's been turned on, they can respond back. So this is so powerful. Imagine just leaving a little audio clip real quick about how they should change something or a little video clip about how they should change their writing in some way. Um, a great way, I've seen this done in classrooms and it's been so successful. I've seen it done um, during workshop time when students wrote in their journals and people were presenting their journal entries and then students were had collaboration turned on and they were commenting um, in each other's journals and just seeing the peers light up when someone left a comment on their page was so powerful. So this can be really engaging for students. Okay, so collaboration, I talked a little bit about that just right then. Collaboration, um, it is a premium version feature, but um, oops, let me go back out, change stuff. Underneath the book, if you click on um, this little share options, if you do have the premium version, you can turn on collaboration and collaboration allows students, either everyone in the library to collaborate on the same book at the same time, or certain students to collaborate on the books at the same time, which is great for peer editing or sharing books with one another. Um, I would use it for peer editing during writer's workshop time um, or leaving for students to leave comments on each other's books. And then do to make sure we don't run out of time. The next one's publishing. Is the next page publishing done? Yeah, publishing. Okay, publishing, let me go back out. So we talked about publishing at the beginning. When you publish your book, when your book is done, so they've done their final draft, they're good to go, now you can publish your book and they become a real published author. So powerful. At the end, you click on the sharing options and you click on publish online. When you click on publish online, um, teachers can publish privately or publicly. Students can only publish privately. And I click publish online. I can click read online. Now this link up here is going to be the link that you can share with families. You can embed on your um, website. You can embed on um, a LMS you're using. You can put it on Seesaw. However you wanna share, you can now um, publish this and share it with an authentic audience. Um, I know John has something to add with um, publishing as well. Absolutely. So for me, um, the ability to publish your books is, uh, I, I think, in my opinion, one of the most, the most powerful button that we have here in Book Creator. I love Book Creator's features, I love everything, but when it's all said and done, being able to say to a student, your work is being viewed by other people around the world, potentially, right, or by your parents and other community members and whatnot, that 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 in and of itself is super engaging to kids. So your kids who, who may not be putting forth the best effort uh, in writing, right, when you tell them that somebody else other than you is going to be able to view their work, that that changes things that flips a switch right for those students and i have seen it and i've i've gotten emails about it i know catherine and i get emails all the time from teachers who agree with that um it's just a really powerful thing uh now obviously you want to keep in mind district privacy policies and things like that right you don't want to be taking a kid's book and publishing it out there for the whole world if it's completely against your um district privacy but even publishing it with that private link, like Catherine said, and, and giving it to a mom uh, who wants to then give it to grandma and grandpas and aunts and uncles, you know, that's awesome. And again, it's just widening that audience that the students have. Absolutely. 
and then celebrating. So once you publish, being able to then celebrate, having a publishing party. I love publishing parties in my class, celebrating those students, the student work. You can print the books if you wanted to as well, but I always like shy away from printing because then you don't have the multimedia. What's the point of printing the book when you don't have that multimedia? So really showcasing them, making them into QR codes, putting printing the cover and putting that QR code on the cover um, and then getting to share them, putting them up in the library, um, sharing them as much as you can outside those classroom walls, um, but really celebrating getting this, the students to read each other's books, publishing that whole library of books um, so then students can celebrate each other's work is really powerful. And then before we end and take some questions, um, March is Be an Author Month. I'm not sure, sure if you are aware, but we are celebrating writing in the month of March, and we have two resources for you. These books are going to be um, filled with writing prompts. There's 23 writing prompts in each. We have one for younger students, and we have one for older students. So in this book, if you want to get these prompts, what you can do is actually just click on one of these books. So if you want the one for younger students, you can just click on this book in, the, in this book when I share it with you. And what you can do is um, there's a button. You can just click read now. The writing prompts, you'll notice, um, you'll just share this with your students and they make a copy of it. And each page has a different writing prompt. You can edit these once you remix it, which I'll show you in a second how to do, but then they can edit and they can um, just write. We want them just to get writing in the month, of, the month of March. If you don't have time in March, do it in April. Do it after testing, whenever you have time. Um, but if you want this book, you click on remix up here. And then it says add an editable copy to your book creator library. Click select and then download this into one of your libraries and just click copy to library. When you click copy to library, it will copy into that library and you will have a copy for yourself. Okay, and we have one for older students as well. Highly recommend checking these out and they're great resources, grab and go. You can add your own prompts if you want to, you can delete some if you don't like them, change them up if you want to, but they're all editable once you remix them. And that's on page 16 of this book. Okay, um, what I'd love to do, and then there's um, also a blog post right here on Writer's Workshop. So if you wanna take a look on that, I wrote this um, actually in 2020, I think, so years ago, um, but it's all about writers, using Writer's Workshop with book creators. So you can take a look at that. And if you wanna check out some more webinars, we have that there. But we'd love to take any questions you have. So if you wanna stick any of those um, I don't know if they can, they can't un unmute themselves, right, John? No. Okay, so if you want to stick any questions in the chat, and we are more than happy to answer those. And I'll publish this book so that you can have this. Yeah, awesome. I didn't see any questions yet, but we've uh, answered everything that I've seen in there um, already, which is great. I'll give them a minute to type them out. That's right. <laughs> Some of us are better than others at typing, right? Which is another reason why we should be using audio buttons and videos and things like that, too, to get all of our thoughts out before our fingers forget. All right, awesome, Shelly can't Shelley. wait to get started. Nice. Awesome. Thank you, Jasmine. Awesome. Thanks for joining, everyone. I hope this gave you some ideas of how that you can use this during that writer's workshop time. Um, and I just stuck that book in the chat. So um, that has some ideas, resources, things like that you can um, keep and share with others as well. Yeah, absolutely, Shelly. Uh, Carrie, um, what is the best way for them to make a copy of a book, uh, reducing potential errors? Yes, absolutely. So, um, Catherine, if you want to answer this, you can, but I have some thoughts on this one as well. What great, um, uh, or hi, Carrie, <laughs> um, are you, what grade level, what grades are you thinking? Are you thinking K2? Okay. Um, John, were you going to talk about turning on collaboration? 
Um, no, but go ahead. That's a good one there too. Yes, that's a good that's a good option. Okay, so my thoughts on this, Carrie, for K two, especially for um, K, um, let me throw this link in the chat real we'll quick. Um, especially for like Kinder K one at least. I, um, what I would suggest is instead of students making a copy of this book and putting it into the same library. Um, so if I wanted to say this is a template and I make a copy of it and then it pops up in the same library, instead of doing that, what you can do is make, let's say you have 25 students in a class, you could pre-populate 25 copies. You could put a name or a student number on each of those titles, okay? And then you could turn on collaboration for each book and then change it and only select that one student for each book and give that student access to that one book. Um, what happens is that student, when they get into their library, they will see that one book when they have access to it. So they open their library, they'll see that one book as long as you've turned off the, everyone can see other people's books. They'll see that one book and they'll be able to click into it and edit that book because you turn on collaboration. So that would be, a, it is tedious, but at least they don't have to go in and make copies of all of the different books. So that would be the one way that you could do it and pre-populate it for everyone. Okay. Yep. John, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I think I think that's a great way. Um, it, it, it does take a little bit of time, um, but once you've got it done, it's not too bad. Now, if you do see multiple groups of kindergarten students or first graders, second graders, the only other option um, that I have seen, and I, I work with a, a, a large school district that uses this option uh, for, the, for them and it helps out, is that when Catherine goes to publish this book, then she will make it remixable. All right. And so then what the teachers will do is in Google Classroom or an email or however they get information to the kids, they will um, publish the book, send the kids the link. And when a student's click on that book, it'll say remix. And hopefully the kids only have one or two libraries that they're part of and they can remix that book into the library. Um, and so, again, first, second graders, I think, can handle that. Kindergarten kids might be a little bit difficult, um, but it, it is a a fairly smooth process and it has really helped this district that I work with um, be able to do that. And yes, you can also add pages uh, to their books afterwards. Um, so again, for, for me, for that suggestion, I would personally just have every kid make a book on their own, make a cool cover or whatever. And then when you go to that pages view at the top of your template book, you find whatever page you want to give to those kids. You just hit the three dots um, at the bottom of the, of the, page there and then um, or hit select and you can choose multiple pages and then you just copy it straight into your library and then into the kids books so it's a very very easy process um, again once you try it a couple times you'll get it figured out pretty quickly but you can put it in individual kids books or everybody's books yeah you could select you could select all up on top so then it would go into every kid's book and then it goes at the end of their book um, instantly, or you could select specific books too. So if you needed like, um, maybe only five kids needed like a root, like accessibility or something, you could put those five kids could get something in their books. Another way for copying, um, I've done like with like kinder students, if you have like, if you do book creator in like a small group instead of full class, just copying it yourself. I know it's kind of annoying, but just having your group of five kids, you're with Book Creator and just making the copies right then and there with the templates, those five kids, just grabbing the iPad or the device and doing it for them. Sometimes that's quick and easy too, but that would be more so just for like kinder. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? I think that's it. Thanks for joining everyone.
All right. Awesome, everybody. Thank you so much. Oh, I love it. Elena, uh, getting other departments involved with Book Creator. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I think that that's another key benefit, right? Even though it's Book Creator, that doesn't mean it's just for English language arts, right? It can be for everything. So uh, absolutely love that you got other departments uh, getting involved. So yeah, so thanks everybody for being here. Just a reminder, this video was recorded. It will be on our YouTube channel uh, probably tomorrow at some point. So definitely go to YouTube, check it out if you want to watch this again. Um, Danielle, <laughs> just answered the question right as you were typing it. Uh, so awesome. So yes, that video will be there probably tomorrow. So thanks everybody again. Uh, Catherine, great work. And um, oh, yep, carry the, um, the link. a copy of the book right now. It's right there on the chat. There it is. All right. Awesome, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Catherine. Bye, everyone.